Hello friends, acquaintances, and enemies of all ages. My name is Justin, and welcome to my list of the top 10 hardest bosses in Cuphead. Don't deal with the devil. Now before we get into the list, let me make it very clear that this is strictly my opinion and is based on what I had trouble with. I'd love to see what you guys think though, so please leave any changes you'd make to the list or leave your own list in the comments below. And with that, let's get right into number 10. Number 10. The boss fight with Beppy the Clown was the first boss fight that actually gave me any real trouble. It was at this point that I knew the game was going to start to get difficult, because now instead of just avoiding things on screen while shooting at the boss, you have to do both of those things plus maneuver on a roller coaster, which adds a whole new dimension to the boss fights thus far. Number 9. Some of you may be wondering why Calamaria is so low on the list, and I wish I had an answer for you. Maybe it's just because as someone who has always loved bullet hell games, this boss fight felt right at home, with things on the screen being relatively easy to dodge. But Combat Bird, what about when she petrifies you? If you position farther towards the left, her petrification won't really affect you at all since you can break out so quickly. Not to mention that when she starts petrifying you, she herself does no other attacks for the rest of the fight. So overall, Calamaria was just enough trouble to make it to the list, but not enough to make it any higher. Number 8. Jimmy the Great has some pretty great aspects to his fight, but the main thing that made it difficult for me was the fact that it feels so damn long. His first two or three stages are relatively easy, but once it starts getting harder, you'd better have not made any mistakes during those stages or you'll regret it. Especially his final stage. I don't know why, but no matter what I did, I don't think I avoided any of those pyramid lasers once. Also, these pillars were so irritating for me to get the hang of. Number 7. The Phantom Express is arguably my favorite boss in all of Cuphead. It has interesting looking stages, a solid amount of difficulty, and my favorite part is the way they use the parry mechanic in this level. You have to position the side rail car to avoid certain attacks or position to hurt the boss, but meanwhile you have all kinds of little ghosts and pumpkins trying to screw everything up by moving it for you. It's pretty difficult to get a hang of it all, but definitely one of my most satisfying victories. Number 6. Dr. Call's robot is not only difficult, but incredibly irritating. In the first stage, you're pretty much just deciding which part of him is the most annoying. His laser is huge and blocks projectiles, making it so you can't attack his other parts depending on where he fired it. His lower body releases a bunch of little plane things that serpentine around the screen, and his middle portion releases an electric gate that stretches across the entire screen, with the only way to get past it being to parry it. He also releases this cheap shot that I fell for my first couple tries. Now, I mentioned previously, I love bullet hell games, but when he starts releasing these projectiles from his diamonds, they come out so awkwardly and at such random angles that I just couldn't manage to dodge them all. Number 5. Now, any of you who've played Cuphead will probably know that the smoke bomb charm is a bit overpowered, and a must have if you're purely trying to win and not to challenge yourself. Well, that increases tenfold against Sally's stage play. She has so many attacks that require a well-timed parry or skillful dodge to avoid that it makes this whole fight very difficult. However, this is reduced pretty drastically with a smoke bomb. So while I was hesitant to put her at number 5, I felt that in this case, it was justified. Seriously, if you use the smoke bomb against her, go back and try again without. You'll see what I mean. Number 4. Now this is probably where I'm going to get a lot of flack, because people seem to have quite a bit of trouble with King Dice, and understandably so. You basically have a bunch of mini boss fights before the actual one, all with the chance of having to go back to start right at the end. But the thing is, I've had runs of King Dice that were really difficult, just barely making it by the skin of my teeth, and yet I've also had runs where I did it quite easily in one go. With some good timing, you can choose what number the dice lands on, allowing you to get more health or land on safe spots. Half of the bosses you fight are also consistently easy, so sometimes you'll get lucky on that as well. And to top it all off, once you actually get to King Dice, He's just a test on how good you are with parries at this point, which shouldn't be much of an issue for anyone at this stage of the game. Number 3. Rumor Honeybottoms is one of those bosses that tests you on most of your skills by this point. You need to avoid enemies, climb a never-ending screen that scrolls upwards, and try to shoot Rumor Honeybottoms herself all while she attacks you from either above or below the screen. If they added an absolutely necessary parry mechanic to this fight, it could even be number 1 on this list. Why can't I avoid these Bullet Bill B things? Number 2. Grim Matchstick is one of those bosses where you can't make any mistakes on your way to his third stage. You have got to play perfectly, and even when you do, his third stage can still take you down before you even knew it happened. The first portion isn't too bad, just avoiding some fireballs, trying to stay on the platforms, and then his second stage comes. Oh my god, I have no idea why I can't avoid these smug little fireballs. They feel so unpredictable. 
I'm pretty sure they jump in the direction you are relative to them and at your current height, and yet I get hit by them so often it's ridiculous. Now, assuming you make it to the third stage, Grim only has two attacks, pretty basic stuff. He shoots slow-moving fireballs in your direction and will burn the middle of the screen with a long-range flamethrower attack. Easy enough, right? Wrong. If Cuphead has taught you anything up to this point, it's to never stop firing. But if you shoot any of those fireballs during the third stage, boom, now they've split up making it incredibly hard to avoid. Mix this with the fact that you have to shoot towards the left of the screen to damage him all while platforming to the right, and this ends up being one of the most skill-testing boss fights in the entire game. Now before we get to number one, I wanted to throw out some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list. Captain Brinybeard was a fun fight and had a bit of character to it, but to me this felt like one of the easiest patterns to learn, each stage only adding a small threat, and for that, I just couldn't justify putting him on this list. Baroness Von Bonbon was another boss where each stage didn't get much more difficult than the last, making the whole fight feel like a cakewalk. Cagney Carnation. Ah, uh, the first boss that had you interact with platforms during the fight. A very nice introduction of the wonderful bosses to come. And how could I not, of course, mention the second wall in the tutorial level? Number one. That's right, you guessed it, the number one hardest boss for me in all of Cuphead was the devil himself. Now, I'm feeling that some people may end up disagreeing with me on this one, but it was the boss I spent by far the most time on. It has a lot of pattern memorization, and even with knowing how to avoid each move, sometimes you still end up with some attack combinations that made it feel nearly impossible to avoid the damage. His first stage has a large variety of attacks, some of which require very quick reaction time. He also has this attack, which is the bane of my existence. In his first stage, this attack is by far the most inconvenient, difficult to avoid, and generally irritating attack he has. It's awkwardly slow moving, covers a large portion of the screen, follows you, and lasts for so long that it carries into some of his other attacks. Now once you've mastered the first portion, you get into the next two stages, which are pretty similar, except now you've got platforming to deal with, as well as a variety of new attacks, some of which taking up to 70% of the screen. He also starts spawning enemies everywhere and removes the number of platforms from 5 to 3 at some point. After that, you get to his final stage, a stage easy to beat in concept, but he removes all but one platform, removes all enemies and projectiles off the screen, and begins to cry. But now you have to avoid his tears and avoid the singular poker chip that falls onto the platform every couple of seconds. This is what I saved all of my HP for, honestly. It felt like a guessing game. You see the poker chip coming, okay, I'm gonna dodge it. Ah! He spawned a tear on the side I was jumping off of to avoid it. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't master this mechanic, and the only way I was able to beat him was to get lucky enough to avoid a couple of the chips and tank a couple more. And thus, I was finally able to win against the boss that I consider to be the hardest in all of Cuphead. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video! Who is your hardest boss fight? I'd love to see your answers down in the comments below. I'll also be releasing a full Cuphead review in the near future, so make sure to subscribe so you can see that as well. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful rest of your day!